I'm Zoe Marlowe, and I welcome my committee chair, Dr. Helena Selle, and my committee members, Dr. Jennifer Crawford and Dr. Melanie Calvert, to the final defense of my dissertation at the Rossier School of Education at University of Southern California. By now, you're all familiar with my subject regarding using a mobile English language learning application for Turkish university English learning students. There's a fairly substantial amount of literature on the subject of using technology in language teaching that I drew from to inform this evaluation study. English Quickly, which is a pseudonym, was the application I chose to evaluate because it is fully mobile and looked quite promising to help my students to learn English and to study and practice their English skills outside of school hours. The organization of this defense presentation is as follows. The problem of practice, which has been very important to me since I began teaching English as a foreign language at university preparatory program level, is that in my context, Turkish students have traditionally experienced great challenges practicing their English skills such as speaking, pronunciation, and listening outside the classroom. They simply do not practice speaking English to one another, and rarely can they find even someone to practice speaking with. This holds them back from being as prepared as they could be for their faculty departments, which they will go to after the English preparatory year. The questions which have guided the study are related firstly to the student's knowledge, motivation, and organizational influences. And also there's a question of what impact did the English Quickly application have on their motivation to learn English? And finally, what can I recommend for continued practice at the university should they decide to continue using the application? Of course, for my study, there had to be a framework which the influences were contained in and related such that could be described well and through literature and have order and meaning. And this turned out to be Clark and Estes gap analysis model shown here on the left. On the right, I made a prototype of model of my own to illustrate how the progress should in theory work. And for the most part, it really did follow this second figure almost exactly how I envisioned it in my mind. I also created a timeline to help me get a visual feel for how my study was going to progress in a linear sense. I decided upon some dates while in the planning stage and I stuck fairly close to those dates so that I had a specific time frame to deal with and to keep myself on schedule with and also a time frame that would be helpful for the student participants. The study protocol was very simple and easy for the students to follow. It included their access to the application English quickly for eight weeks and a recommended requirement of watching five videos per week and doing some work that the videos required by speaking, listening, and learning new vocabulary. Perhaps the most fun and interesting part of this dissertation for me were the data analysis and findings. I was so curious as to how the students have performed and how they manage the different levels of videos and also the extra components of the modules associated with the videos they watched. This figure illustrates an overall picture of how the students performed the tasks over the cumulative period of eight weeks. At first glance, it seems obvious some students did a lot more video watching than others, but there were a lot of data about the different parts of the tasks they performed, so we'll look at those briefly as well. If I had to choose a favorite set of figures from my data analysis, it would probably be these two. The reason the data are so compelling is that I was not sure how all the students would score on their pronunciation progress. I was surprised they fared as well as they did on the first week. In fact, I was really pleased with the first week's results. Then when I opened up the eighth week results, their progress was even better, and every single one of the participants had made quite a bit of progress. This was really exciting to get a visual illustration of how their pronunciation had changed in eight weeks. I hadn't expected this. 
As I dug deeper into the different parts of the application the participants were using, I found a lot of variation from one student to the next. So this was another surprise. The figure on the left illustrates the videos watched by all participants cumulatively from weeks one to eight. The lowest score was 17 videos and the highest 181 total videos watched. I found the wide range to be a surprise and I wasn't really sure why until a bit later on. The figure on the right was really interesting because it showed how many new vocabulary words the students learned in the eight weeks. The lowest number of words learned was 57, the highest number 715, again a wide range. I gave two surveys, one prior to the study to learn about some basic data about their mobile phone use and also their ideas about language learning using a mobile phone. Now, the second survey was given after they finished the study and although most of the questions were Likert scale items, there were one or two open-ended questions which gave me the first look at their opinions on the surveys themselves. If you read the responses, they seem very positive and informative, which helped me to get a feel for what they actually thought about the application. The one-on-one -on -one interviews turned out to be the most interesting information. It came straight from the participants' mouths. Survey data, sure, it can tell you some necessary information, of course, but there really is nothing like sitting in the same room with a study participant and observing their facial reactions, their body language, as well as listening to what their answers to the questions are. In the first five or so minutes, the answers were very positive and indicated how they were positively affected by using the English Quickly application. However, near the end of the interview question about whether or not the participants understood the report data generated by the application, most of the participants participants just answered the question with an affirmative response that they did understand it. However, several students went on and began telling me that they were surprised by the reports. For instance, some students said they were really shocked that they had not performed as well as they thought they had. Also, they were under the mistaken impression that they had watched more videos than they actually had. Another one-on-one -on -one interview question asked the participants whether or not the application had made them feel more motivated to learn English. The majority of the participants answered that question affirmatively as well and seemed genuinely motivated during the conversation. However, a few of them said although they were initially motivated, some of them lost interest after the first two weeks. Others mentioned they felt bad about themselves because they couldn't understand the higher level videos, so they just gave up. They observed their friends doing the higher level videos and felt left out that they couldn't watch those as well. Thus, they lost some self-efficacy and definitely lost some interest. And those are the two components focused on in the motivation area of this study. The final analysis of the data turned out to be rather mixed, which was what I had mostly expected even though the surveys seem to be all positive in general. On the left figure, we can see how the participation varied amongst the participants in that the pronunciation was improved for each of them. So that got a nice 100% score there. The majority of participants met or exceeded the study criteria minimum requirements. So that 70% mark indicates that most of them did do all of the 40 videos or five per week and they did most of the other requirements too and in the end just half of them completed all components meaning they did do all of the videos and then all of the modules along with those videos the figure on the right gives a breakdown of responses that were gleaned from the post usage um, interviews and indicates the mixed frequency of responses so this is a combination. Next, we have chapter five, which gives the recommendations for further study. The items which were not completely realized or fell short of being met as far as the requirements were revealed. In the knowledge area, it was revealed that the data 
Only half of the participants could self-evaluate their effective use of the application. Recommendations on this are, of course, get more substantial monitoring going on, and it's recommended that the students who have difficulty fulfilling the five video requirement per week, that they ask to have their requirements adjusted. And English Quickly allows you to make custom customized programs for people, so it would work, it would help to have that more monitoring definitely. In the motivation area, it was revealed self-efficacy was a problem for some students who felt inadequately prepared to view level four videos and could only complete level three. The level actually didn't matter in the study as the students were instructed to view whichever levels they felt the most comfortable with. However, some revealed negative feelings of self-efficacy about their perceived shortcomings, like they didn't feel they were good enough to watch those. Those recommendations, of course, they should be counseled more about their progress. And again, individualized programs can be made, adjustments can be made to their program individually. Interest posed a similar problem in some participants in that they just simply did not feel interested all the time. And therefore, they didn't complete as many components or watched as many videos or learned as many words as the others. This uh, took a recommendation of perhaps greater interest should be created in the classroom. Maybe they could be paired with a, a student that has more interest too and correlates uh, classroom activities with the videos. Finally, in the organizational area, Participants were not completely supported by the university in that they only supported the study being carried out, but the university didn't fund the study. And as a researcher, that funding became my responsibility, although being promised that funds would be available the year before. This affected the number of participants which completed the study, and it is recommended that for future studies, monetary support should be made clear in the form of a contract and ratified by the administration before the study occurs. Also, students need to be continuously supported and allowed access to technology tools, and these can be requested in the future by teachers and be budgeted for by the organization. This concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for watching and for participating in my dissertation defense.